Now, today, I'll provide updates on the four directives that I've issued to this team. And as a reminder, first, we need to continue to focus on recovery. Second, we need to clear the channel and open vessel traffic to the port. Third, we need to take care of all of the people who have been affected by this crisis. And fourth, we need to, and we will, rebuild the key bridge. This morning, I received a briefing from Unified Command, and I've spoken with leaders all across the state, and also leaders from our fellow delegation, leaders from all across the country, and been working on, who have been working on this response throughout. So first, on our recovery efforts. As I mentioned yesterday, we need to do more work on clearing the channel in order to move forward. This is a remarkably complex operation, and our focus needs to be on unity of command and unity of effort. Conditions in the water make it unsafe for rescue divers, and we're not just talking about weather and wind. We're talking about debris. We're talking about wreckage. We're talking about pieces of the key bridge that are in the water. One of the mantras in the military that we learned was this, mission first, people always. And that's the mindset that we are applying to this work. We are going to move as fast as possible. We are going to ensure the safety of our first responders and we are not going to compromise one for the other. We are going to do both at the same time. Right now, the conditions make it unsafe for rescue divers. But as soon as those conditions change, Colonel Butler has assured me that those rescue divers will be going right back in the water. I also want to remind everyone that this is a no drone zone. It has been established and that is throughout the entire airspace surrounding the collapse. This is not a game and please do not test my seriousness on this. The instructions are simple and they must be followed. All drones are to stay away from the site of the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapse, period and full stop. Now second, on clearing the federal channel and opening vessel traffic to the port. With a salvage operation that is this complex and this unprecedented, you need to be able to plan for every single moment. And this work is going to take time and we are going to continually assess and reassess this situation. This morning, Unified Command assured me that the hull of the Dolly is damaged but intact. The Army Corps and their partners will begin to move forward with the crane operations today. The north sections of the key bridge are going to be cut up and removed. This will eventually allow us to open up a temporary restricted channel that will help us to get more vessels in the water around the site of the collapse. And our friends at Trade Point Atlantic have agreed to help us with the process wreckage from the salvage and operation and to the team at Trade Point I want to say thank you again for stepping up. This is going to take time to clear this section of the collapse. It's not going to take hours. It's not going to take days. But once we complete this phase of the work, we can move more tugs and more barges and more boats into the area to accelerate our recovery. As of yesterday, 377 people were actively engaged in response operations in support of Unified Command. And we will continue to marshal people and resources to ensure that we have everything that we need to do this work as safely, as efficiently, and as effectively as possible. Now, I've said this before, I will say it again, and I will continue to say this. This is not just about Maryland. This is about our nation's economy. The port handles more cars and more farm equipment, more than any other port inside this country. And at least 8,000 workers on the docks have jobs that have been directly affected by this collapse. 
Our economy depends on the Port of Baltimore, and the Port of Baltimore depends on vessel traffic. Maryland's economy and Maryland workers rely on us to move quickly, and it's not just Maryland that is being impacted. I'm also talking about the farmer in Kentucky. I'm also talking about the auto worker in Ohio. I'm talking about the restaurant owner in Tennessee. This is impacting all of us. And the nation's economy and the nation's workers are relying on us to move quickly and to move together. Third, taking care of our people. I've said it already, mission first, people always. Last night, the Small Business Administration accepted our request to approve a disaster declaration. And that declaration is now in effect. I wanna thank the Biden-Harris administration for accepting our request within a matter of hours. And I wanna personally thank President Biden for his constant support. Because of this declaration, small businesses affected by the disaster can now apply for disaster loan assistance from the federal government, and these are low interest loans up to $2 million. They're gonna help us ensure that our small businesses get the cash that they need to pay their bills and to keep people employed. The applications should be submitted online at lending.sba.gov by December 30th, 2024. I'm gonna say it one more time so people can, so, uh, so for those who missed it can hear it again. Applications should be submitted online at lending.sba.gov and they should be in by December 30th of 2024. This declaration also empowers the state of Maryland to apply for new federal funding to pay for services and training for impacted workers and wage recovery. I've been briefed by the Maryland Department of Labor. They've assured me that they are working around the clock to get that application submitted ASAP. The Small Business Administration will also be establishing a business resource center on Monday. We will get that location information to you as soon as we know more. Now fourth, on rebuilding. I said it yesterday. We cannot rebuild the bridge until we have cleared the wreckage. But we're gonna get this done. We will clear the wreckage, we will move the dolly, and we will rebuild the Francis Scott Key Bridge. We are gonna do that because we are Maryland tough and we are Baltimore strong, and you can bet on that.